Hi, and welcome to the video on our learning lab. This is a little bit about what we do at Crescent Heights High School to support students learning in becoming what we would like to think some well-rounded scientists in our learning lab. So this is me um, and my good old friend Estebone. He's our school skeleton mascot for the science department. Um, so at Crescent Heights High School, we serve about 1,100 students and we serve students from grade seven to 12. And so our dream is to have a lab that supports all learning for all students. At our school, currently we have our basic programs of bio, physics, chem, mathematics, as well as running from grades seven to 12. We also have a few other extra classes, such as anatomy as one of our option classes. And this is our learning lab. So our learning lab is a space that, as you can see, is big and beautiful, but it needs some updating. So John Barry first was the first person to dream the learning lab. And then Dean Brown kind of gave it vision and called it the learning lab. And now here with my department, we would love to see the learning lab move into a new future and get a little bit of an update. Students in our learning lab have the space to uh, collaborate and look at different types of labs together. Um, we have a variety of, like I said, age groups. We have on the far right side a grade 8 class and on the left side we have a grade 12 class performing different experiments. So we have lots of great things happening between chemistry and physics and math and biology, but we do have some materials that we would love to see updated. The space look a little bit more flexible and usable as a learning space. Uh, right now we have tables, which are great, but it makes it hard to use as a lab bench and create that space where we can have more kids wandering around and working on stuff together. Being a scientist at our school, I'd like to think is pretty cool. Um, we've got a lot of fantastic teachers that really, really are passionate about STEM. They love building, they love creating, they love inspiring, and they love creating those critical thinkers. And we are really passionate about making sure students get into our lab at all times. We have our basic materials such as microscopes and we have titration materials and we have, um, we can do dissections, we can do um, building with different varieties of electrical equipment, but a lot of this equipment is basic and some of it is out of date and needs an upgrade. Um, this is my teaching partner, Rachel, uh, and her and I, our big proponent is getting kids to do hands-on learning. So uh, that was the one time we had the opportunity to dissect a very large cow heart with our students, which was a very fun activity. And we also have um, a space for a fume hood so we can do proper ventilation for certain labs, which has been a very big blessing for us as we use it quite a bit. We believe that students are natural scientists, that curiosity is what drives learning. And so we would love to see our learning lab become that space for all students. And currently right now, like I said, the setup is great, but it doesn't allow for the flow of multiple classes to be in there at a time. So we really have been limited to the space we have and how many kids can use it at a time. We also have this beautiful space that we call the greenhouse. Unfortunately, our greenhouse isn't a true greenhouse. We can grow some plants in there, but ultimately they fry and die in the summertime and get too cold in the wintertime. Um, we have a glass roof with no shading, no natural way to block the light or create a cool atmosphere. Um, it's just hot all the time in the summer and cold all the time in the winter. We don't have proper cooling or heating. Um, we do have a little bit of a setup for aquaponics on the side, to like water stuff. Um, unfortunately, it is fed by a very old um, water supplied out the side, and so sometimes it doesn't work. And so we would love to create this space as another usable space for students. Currently, we use it as a place for students to work, but we would love to have the ability to have students grow things and learn in this space and really get an idea of how to uh, tend plants, take care of plants, transplant them into different um, soils and really learn about like soil acidity, soil and the types of soils we have that can grow things and why it's a good space to grow things. So this is a dream we have for this space and hoping that we can create something that supports all student learning. 
So these are our just uh, empty lab pictures, but this is what our lab looks like. It's a great space and we're very, very blessed to have this space. We love this space and it is used so much. But again, we just would love to see some updates to help us make sure that we can create and keep creating the space that is needed for students to grow and learn. We believe that being a good scientist is about being up to date. So our goal is, is always to update our own learning to help students with their learning. So again, having access to the materials that help build those skills is really important to us. Being curious, curious and exploring and thinking about learning is a big part about being a scientist at our school. Organizing, collecting data, is another one. And again, that lab, our lab is wonderful, but we don't have enough space to set up large components to gather pendulum labs or to create a space for race cars to race along the ground or on tracks. And we would love to be able to build those spaces in so that kids can use their photo gates or they can do measuring of speed and time. We love to have kids come in and learn science through observing, whether it's on microscopes or doing demos with us or getting a chance to just explore their learning in other ways, such as building any sort of circuits. We think that's really, really important as well. And a big part of it is also learning about the ethical side of science, that things are not always black and white, that there's moving parts, and that being a good scientist means you've got to be a critical thinker. And sometimes critical thinking means to be open to new thinking. And last but not least is to us is commitment. And that's what this department that I work with is so wonderful at. They are committed to growing, evolving, and staying curious at all times and passing that down to students. So thank you for listening to this presentation. And if you have any questions, please email me. Um, we look forward to hearing from you.